morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Cassandra Garrison, Reuters Social Media and Live News Editor, and I'm joined by Jason Fields, Managing Editor of Reuters.com, bringing you a couple of today's top, sto top stories. We'll start with a check-in on Hillary Clinton's health, and we'll also talk about the NCAA's decision to move several championship events out of North Carolina. If you have any questions for us, please leave them in the comments while we're Facebook Live, and we will see if we can get to them. Jason, let's start with what we know about Hillary Clinton. Of mm -hmm. course, by now, our readers know that she had been diagnosed with pneumonia last week. She was seen leaving the 9-11 ceremony in New York City, uh, needing help. Her knees were buckling. She was uh, obviously not feeling very well. She disappeared for a couple hours after that. Uh, and now she's saying she can possibly resume campaigning in a couple of days. Yeah, so, I mean, she has missed out on a couple of days and probably the, you know, what people say the most important uh, time uh, for any campaign. Right. Uh, I mean, every moment sort of counts between now and the election. I think we're uh, coming up on 56 days mm -hmm. before people actually vote. Yeah, it's crunch time. Right. And so she was actually supposed to go out to California. She was supposed to be there yesterday and today. Uh, big fundraisers. Um, big surprise. <laughs> but um, anyway, so, yeah, I mean, you know, but she was saying she was feeling better from the very, you know, w within two hours of when we saw her knees buckling. Right. I mean, she came out of Chelsea's house, uh, her, you know, um, just a couple hours later and, you know, was waving and uh, telling people she was fine. And then it turned out that she had pneumonia. I mean, we only found that out after, uh, you know, she told people she was feeling better. So, oh, right. you and know, she, I mean. She had said that she initially thought the pneumonia wasn't a big deal. She even right. ignored a doctor's orders to rest. And there had been a lot of speculation yesterday about how serious it was. But now yeah. saying that she thinks she'll be back to campaigning in a couple of days seems like it actually is, I mean, doesn't seem to be that detrimental, that serious of a case. No, I mean, and uh, you know what, I, I got to say, I mean, I'm, uh, I don't want to get into a position of diagnosing her. Uh, you know, I mean, right. Right. Uh, we're we, not we doctors. have to, we're, we're not doctors. Yeah. I mean, and also, I mean, we can only sort of stand back and if she shows up and she seems fine, I mean, as journalists, we just have to say she seems fine. Um, you know, uh, and, uh, I think uh, we will see in a couple of days and, you know, I mean, uh, hopefully I don't think anybody at this point really wants to see this you know something terrible right y you know i mean i, I think, think i think probably you are right, you're right within a couple of days we'll probably see her come out uh kind of make make a show of of letting viewers know that she's or letting voters know that she's healthy she's doing okay that's probably yeah. just you know a matter of time before we see and i mean one of the big things that we were talking about yesterday is that uh the, her campaign acknowledged that it had been a bit slow in disclosing yeah. this you know, that she had been diagnosed with pneumonia. And of course, a lot of her critics say one of the big problems is that her campaign is too secretive, that the mm -hmm. Clintons are too secretive. So yeah. I wonder how that might come into play um, after she's back on the campaign. Yeah, trail. right, exactly. I mean, I think that's sort of the one of the main complaints about the Clinton campaign from, um, it's not a, a talking about the general public, but I think, you know, uh, it's more even people who follow them closely that it's a very tight group around her, um, very tight group around Bill Clinton as well. And they do tend to try to keep everything in house. They, they're very, uh, you know, leery of the press. They're very leery of outsiders. They feel like they've been under attack for 20 something years, um, you know, dating back to Whitewater and, and probably even in Arkansas. So, um, I mean, that sort of caution or, you know, closed mouthedness, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, that that comes across here, too. Um, it was one funny thing I just wanted to say, like, you know, as far as regarding her health, um, you know, one aide was uh, quoted as saying, you know, well, do you want to be the person telling Hillary Clinton, go, you know, make sure you take a drink of water? Right. You know, actually shoving a water bottle in her face? I mean, you know, it's, it's an awkward thing. Yeah, it is grueling on the campaign yeah. trail. We touched yeah. on this a little bit yesterday on our Facebook Live with uh, a couple of election reporters, Luciana Lopez and Emily yeah. Flitter. I've spent some time on the campaign trail, too. And, it, I mean, for, for candidates, for staffers and journalists alike, it is a really difficult way to live for weeks at a time. I mean, there's very little sleep. Um, you're just on the go the entire time. You don't have 
uh, access to the most nutritious, healthy foods. So, yeah. and there's a, a long history of sort of, of candidates and campaign staffers getting sick on the campaign trail. Right, right. It's just sort of a fact of this kind of life. Um, okay, so what we know about while she's um, recovering is Bill Clinton will be hitting the campaign trail yeah. more on her behalf. So we'll mm -hmm. be uh, we'll be seeing more of Bill Clinton, and um, yeah, I just I sort of wonder if um, he'll be addressing this as as he's sort of stumping for her. Yeah, I mean, so he came out. Um, he was on Charlie Rose, the Charlie Rose mm -hmm. program, and he talked. Uh, he said that he is willing to bet that she is actually healthier than Donald Trump. Um, I'm not sure really what that's based on. Other, he said that you know she really keeps in shape, um, and we do know that uh, he likes fast food. But um, I, you know, I don't, I, I don't know that you need to uh, to counter that. Actually, we should say Donald Trump is going on the Dr. Oz program. Oh, really? He's going Tell on Dr. Oz. This. Okay, so I think it's actually tomorrow. Was um, this? Um no, something this, that was this planned new. already. Okay, no, so this is new no. since since Hillary Hillary Clinton's health news came yeah, to light. Yeah, so he, so he's planning to be on Dr. Oz, and uh, was also saying that he's going to release more medical records. So, um, I mean, Dr. Oz, uh, who was also famous for some of uh, his uh, supplements uh, <laughs> that'll yeah. make you lose weight. I mean, I, you know, he's uh, he's uh, he's a doctor, I guess, but uh, there have been questions raised about. Uh, what he sells on his show. So that's kind of an interesting choice. Indeed. Interesting choice. I mean, it, this this entire week uh, just goes to show how important a candidate's health is to sure. voters, right? I mean, um, people want to know. They want they want their candidates to be transparent about their health. Yeah. I, I mean, the well, fact that she had been diagnosed with pneumonia on Friday and then not revealed it until Sunday, cr I mean, critics were quick to jump on that. It's only, it was only a couple yeah. of days, yeah. you know? Well, but it, uh, I think if, you know, if it was an ingrown toenail or a cold, then, but the word pneumonia is pretty scary, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, people die of pneumonia. Right. Um, so, you know, I think that makes it, I think it makes people take it much more seriously. And it doesn't help, of course, that there had been a lot of rumors going around, especially in Republican circles, that uh, she was very ill. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, actually, uh, you know, the Drudge Report website has been linking to all kinds of articles uh, about whether or not she's actually very sick. Right. That, which, by the way, there is no evidence whatsoever uh, right. that there's anything actually wrong with her beyond, uh, you know, I mean, what we now know is right. right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, um you know, I mean, but it, it's also part of a narrative about, you know, is she strong enough to serve? And, you know, it, it fits into a, a storyline that certain people want to have about her. Right. So, but, I mean, yeah, I mean, you want to know that the person you're voting for actually can carry out the job. And it'll be interesting just to watch Trump this week as Hillary Clinton is kind of taking at least a couple of days break from the campaign trail, sending Bill Clinton to campaign on her behalf. Um, as we know, Trump is sort of closing that gap between them and the polls. Yeah. And yep. is this an opportunity for him to kind of hit, you know, hit even harder? Well, I mean, so he's out there. He's unopposed, uh, you know, in this, in a sense, mm -hmm. anyway. Um, he can be on TV. He can be everywhere. She is right now personally, uh, you know, she's got her surrogates, but she's, if she's laid up. I don't know how big a deal that honestly is. Uh, someone uh, very uh, intelligently said uh, yesterday that in, in a meeting we were, uh, that actually both of us were in, that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a couple of weeks from now, we're going to have the big first debate between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. That's right. And when they're both up on the stage and they're both facing each other, I mean, this is looking to be really, really dramatic. Um, are we even going to remember this? Right. I know. Well, I don't I, know. Maybe it will come up there, and maybe it won't. It, yeah. I mean, I mean, will this be will this be something that Trump kind of uses against her? You know, the, the secrecy it, element again. Yeah, it's easy to believe, honestly, that um, the debate performance will really be you know, what people carry forward. And then we've got two more debates after that. There so is if she's healthy a, from there, from now on, you know, maybe this this isn't really a dominant thing. Maybe it's really transitory. It could be. And, only, you know, we'll be watching those debates very closely. They'll yeah. be coming up. Um, Jason, let's move on to this story about uh, that's coming out of North Carolina. So citing a North Carolina law that makes it illegal for anyone to use a public restroom that does not match the gender they were assigned at birth 
The right. NCAA has announced it's now moving seven, seven championship events out of North Carolina. Okay, so this is mm -hmm. big news. Obviously, North Carolina, huge state for college sports. Um, yeah. Yeah, what, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, were, well, was this expected? I mean, we know that some other sporting events have been moved out of North Carolina recently over this law. Yeah, I, so, I mean, first thing when you think about North Carolina, do you think about basketball, mm -hmm. uh, college basketball? And, you know, the rivalry on Tobacco Road, right, which is what leads between UNC Chapel Hill and Duke, I mean, that is utterly ferocious. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, we have uh, incredibly famous coach Mike Krzyzewski, uh, who, you know, has led Duke now for many years. And, I mean, there it's a religion down there. It's really a religion. So yes. the idea of taking away any part of the NCAA championship from North Carolina, that's got to have a huge impact. North Carolina already lost uh, the uh, NBA's uh, All Star Game, which is supposed right. to actually that was have just a, two months ago. Just that, yeah, yep. I mean, and you know, for that's, the same reason. Oh, totally. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's just a testament to how controversial this law is. Um, critics yeah. of the law say it's discrimination against transgender people, and it's just been a sort of flashpoint in this entire debate in the yeah. U.S. about transgender yeah. rights, specifically when it comes to things like public bathrooms and locker rooms and things. Yeah, I mean, I think that, I don't know that North Carolina's governor or the legislature realized that it was going to be that big a deal mm -hmm. when they passed this law. Um, there's been uh, corporate backlash as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just sports. Uh, companies have, uh, one company actually said they weren't going to be creating the jobs that they said they were going to create in North Carolina because of this, uh, this law. Um, I mean, you know, I think it's actually really hard to quantify exactly how much it's cost North Carolina uh, because, you know, people with different agendas are going to give you different amounts. Absolutely. Right. I mean, so. Yeah. Um, and it's hard to necessarily tell exactly how much money you didn't make. Um. <laughs> right. So, yeah. And just just for our viewers who are just turning in, tuning in, we're talking about this um, th this announcement by the NCAA that the first two rounds of men's March Madness, as well as some other championship events, will be moved out of North Carolina as a result of this law um, that makes it illegal for anybody to use a public restroom that does not correlate with the gender they were assigned at birth. So that's what we're talking about. Um, if you have questions, leave them in the comments. We'll get to them. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to those first two rounds of, of men's March Madness, uh, the NCAA is also pulling other events, soccer, golf, tennis, lacrosse, baseball. So this is really mm -hmm. across the board. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's a very strict, I mean, the message is very, very clear. It's a big announcement. It I mean, is, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's a big announcement. Um, with actually, and there was also a response. I want to read this to our viewers as well. Sure. Um, Cammie Mueller, so she's a spokeswoman for the North Carolina GOP. She issued a response to this. I'm going to read it. She said, this is so absurd, it's almost comical. I genuinely look forward to the NCAA merging all men's and women's teams together as a singular unified unisex teams. Under the NCAA's logic, colleges should make cheerleaders and football players share bathrooms, showers, and hotel rooms. This decision is an assault to female athletes across the nation. If you are unwilling to have women's bathrooms and locker rooms, how do you have a women's team? I wish the NCAA was this concerned about the women who were raped at Baylor, Perhaps the NCAA should stop with their political peacocking and instead focus their energies on making sure our nation's collegiate athletes are safe both on and off the field. Again, that is a statement by Cammie Mueller, spokeswoman for the North Carolina GOP. Strong words. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, I, I guess that's the counter argument. I it mean, shows how polarizing this issue is. Yeah, I mean, I, people seem to have taken this and they just put it in the starkest possible mm -hmm. terms. Uh, I mean, you know, it's either it's about freedom or it's about safety. Um, doesn't seem like there are that many people who really come down in the middle. It's, it's a remarkably emotional issue for so many people. And a, such a political one as well. Yeah. You know, trickling all the way down into sports. Yeah. No. All right. Well, that is a, a story we will continue to watch. You can find all of these stories we're talking about on Reuters.com on the homepage right now. We will put them in the comments section of this video so you can read them afterwards. Jason Fields, managing editor of Reuters.com, thanks so much for joining us. Thank
Thank you. Thank our viewers for joining us as well. I'm Cassandra Garrison for Reuters, and we will see you next